Well, hey there, calculus students. I'm ready to whip out another video lecture here. This one's on section 4.6. We're going to be doing some optimization problems. Now, we know how to do the calculus part. If you're given a function and you want to find its maximum and minimum, you just take the derivative, set equal to zero, and get all your critical points. Then, since we're not interested in the graph in this section, we'll use the second derivative test to verify that your critical point gives you the max or min. This section will be given word problems, so start out carefully. Read it. As you're reading it, underline the key words. When you've finished reading it, state your objective in words. Say something like, I want to maximize the total volume. I want to minimize the total cost. So give yourself a sentence. Now, in your reading, you've got some unknowns, so try to identify what they are. Let x be the length of a rectangle, or something like that. And then what you want to do is write your objective function in terms of your unknowns. If, when you write your objective function, it has more than one variable, then you've got to write some sort of side equation. Look for a number you haven't used yet, and write an equation that relates all of your variables to that number. Solve it for one of the extra variables, Substitute it into the objective function until you get it in terms of one variable. Now you're ready to do the calculus. Do all that stuff that I said above with the derivative, getting your critical points, checking it, and then if your critical number or your max or min makes some sense to you, write your answer in a sentence. So I've got four examples here to go through. Let me kind of underline some key words here as I read it. The owner of a ranch has 3,000 yards of fencing to enclose a rectangular piece of grazing land along a straight portion of a rib river. So we're going to go with a rectangle. If fencing is not required along the river, what dimensions give the pasture of maximum area? Okay, so I've read it. I've underlined my keywords. I'm going to state my objective. I want to maximize the area of a rectangle. So our rectangle looks like something like this. And then there's this river over here where there's not going to be any fence. So I need some variables. I need something for the length and the width. So area is length times width. So look at there, my objective function has too many variables. So I'm going to go back and write a side equation that relates those variables to the 3,000 yards of fencing. In my picture, the fencing is only going to go around these three sides. So I'm going to add up those three lengths and set them equal to the 3,000. So that says 3,000 is equal to 2w plus l. So it looks easy to solve this for l. 3,000 minus 2w is equal to l. I'm going to take that and substitute it into the objective function so that area will only be in terms of w. So I take out the l, put in 3,000 minus 2w times w. There's my objective function. Now it's in terms of one variable, I can just do the calculus. To make the derivative easier, I'll just multiply it out. Here comes the calculus. The derivative is really easy. 3,000 minus 4w. Set the derivative equal to 0. Do I move the 4w over, divide by 4? I get w is 3,000 divided by 4. I believe that's 750. Now I'm going to check my answer with the second derivative test. A double prime is a negative 4. So at that critical num number, it's negative. If the second derivative is negative, the graph is concave down, and so I have a max at w is equal to 750 which is good because that's what I wanted. 
what dimensions give a pasture of maximum area? And so my answer is, I want the width to be 75 yards and the length to be, well, we go back up in here, 3,000 minus two, not 75, 750, there we go. 3,000 minus two times 750 is 1,500, so that makes the length 1,500 yards. 750 yards by 1,500 yards. By the way, I've got all of these problems typed up on a worksheet and their solutions posted on Blackboard. So you don't have to go back through the video if you don't write all this down. They're all written out for you on Blackboard with an additional problem that I did not include on this video. Okay, let's go on to the next one then. An open box with a rectangular base is to be constructed from a rectangular piece of cardboard that's 16 inches wide and 21 inches long by cutting a square from each corner and then bending up the sides. Find the size of the corner square that will produce a box having the largest possible volume. Okay, all right, so let's see. There's our objective. Maximize volume of a box. I'm going to draw the picture of how the box is to be made right up here. We've got a rectangle that's 16 inches wide and 21 inches long. And we're going to cut a square out of each corner. That gives us four flaps here. Kind of fold up each flap, tape the edges together, and we have a box. We want to find the size of the corner square, so let's stick our variable there. Then we're going to cut out an x by x corner, and then fold up the flaps. Okay, so I have identified my variable, I stated my objective, now I'm going to write how I'm going to figure out the volume of the box. So if it's a rectangular box, the volume is just length times width times height. And let's get the length and the width and the height of the box in terms of x. So for the length of the box, we take our 21-inch side and cut in x inches and x inches. So the 21-inch got shorter by x and another x. So 21 minus 2x is the length of that side. In a similar manner, I took my width that well, was 16 x, 16 inches and cut in x inches there and x inches there. So this little flap is 16 minus 2x. And then when you fold those flaps up, the depth of the box itself, or that height, is x. So in terms of x, I have 21 minus 2x times 16 minus 2x times x. That's it. We don't need a side equation. We've got our objective function in terms of x. We're ready to do the calculus, but maybe to make the calculus easier, let's multiply this out a little bit. I'm not going to multiply it all the way out. I'll do that later. Let's just send the x through that second factor. And then we can do the product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus that second one times the derivative of the first. Now we're going to have to set the derivative equal to zero, so let's now multiply this out. Let's see, 21 times 16. 20 times 16, 2 times 16 is 32, so 20 times 16 is 320 plus another 16. 21 times 16 should be 336. 21 times the negative 4 is negative 84x. 
And then negative 2x times 16 is negative 32x. And then the last two multiply to give me a plus 8x squared. Send the negative 2 through that second parenthesis, and we'll get a negative 32x plus 4x squared. So when I put this in descending order, I'm going to have a total of 12x squared. And then I've got a negative 84, negative 32, negative 32. So negative 84 and negative 64. Negative 148. And then I've got plus 336. Let's see, I don't believe 12 goes into 148, so I can't pull out a 12. Six doesn't, so let's pull out a four. And that leaves me three x squared minus, four goes into 14, three times 737 x, four goes into 32, eight, 84. Keep going, we're gonna to try to factor here. Now I need some factors of 84 that, when multiple, one of them's multiplied by three, add to 37. So let me write down some factors of 84. Let's see, we've got two and 42. They're both gonna have the same sign because of this plus. So I can't get those to add up to 37. Let's see, how about four and 21? So let's see, three times four is 12. 12 plus 21 is not 37. So let's try a three in here. 84 is divisible by three, yes. Three times two is six, that's eight. That'll do it. Three times three is nine. Nine plus 28 is 37. So I need the three here and the 28 there. All right, so V prime is zero when every factor is zero. So this factor gives me 28 over three. This factor gives me X is three. 28 over three is nine-ish in inches. So if you look back up here at the box, you can't take out nine inches from two different corners. That's too big. So let's throw it away. It makes no physical sense. This is our only critical number that makes any kind of sense. Let's take the second derivative. Let's take the second derivative from here. We're gonna do the second derivative test. And I'll get 24x minus 148. We check the sign of the second derivative when x is replaced by 3. 3 times 24, let's see, 3 times 4 is 12, 6, 72. So this is going to be a negative number. If the second derivative is negative, that means we have a max at x is equal to 3, which is good because we want to find the largest possible volume. So our conclusion is to cut 3 inch squares from each corner. I'd like you to state your answer in some pseudo form of a sentence because it kind of gives you a way of checking if your answer makes any sense. All right, who's ready for another one? The old ship A and ship B problem. Here we go. We've got to figure out where these guys are. Ship A is 65 nautical miles due east of ship B. So I'm going to go ahead and start that out with a picture. A is east of B. So let's put B here and put A here. And initially, this is 65 miles. Ship A is sailing south at 15 nautical miles per hour. 
while ship B is sailing east at 10 knots, which are the miles per hour, nautical miles per hour. If the ships continue their respective courses, find the minimum distance between them. So here's the distance between them at that instant. And the and when it occurs, we want to minimize distance and a when we get to figure out a time. So let's run some time off. Let's let T equal the hours from the initial position. And let's figure out how far A has traveled in T hours. So in T hours, A is moving at 15 miles per hour. So this length is just going to be 15 times T miles. This distance was 65, but now it's shorter. It's shorter by 10 T miles. So this distance is 65 minus 10 T miles. And then the distance between them is going to be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I think we can get that distance by the Pythagorean theorem. That distance squared is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs. Now, if I want distance, I'd have to take the square root of that. But think about what you'd do if you were to take the derivative of a square root function. You'd have to bring the power down, raise it to one power less, and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside. It's the derivative of the stuff inside that's going to make it the smallest. So let's just call this function f of t and minimize it. Let's find where this has its minimum value. Minimize the distance squared. And so when we answer the question to get distance, we'll have to take the square root of it. Okay, so here comes the derivative. F prime, using the power rule, bring the power down, raise it to one power less, take the derivative of what's inside. Same deal here, bring the power down, raise it to one power less, take the derivative of what's inside. So now let's simplify that, it's set equal to zero. Let's see, when I send the two here, two times 65 is 130. Multiply that by 10 is a negative 1300. The negative 10 times the negative 10 is a positive 100, times two gives me a positive 200t. 15 times 15 is 225, double that and I get 450t. And so my second derivative is negative 1300 plus 650t. Set that equal to zero. So I move the 1300 over, divide by 650. I believe that's a nice even two. All right, time is an hour, so two hours later. We'll make a quick check of the second derivative to show that that is indeed a minimum. Here's my first derivative right here. So my second derivative is just going to be the 650. It means the second derivative is positive, so it's concave up, so we have a min. So we found the min, so now we need the distance. So let's get the distance squared, and then we'll take the square root of it. So we'll have 65 minus 10 times 2 squared plus 15 times 2 squared. So 65 minus 20 is 45 squared plus 30 squared is the distance squared. So the distance is the square root of that. And I'm not going to worry about that number. 
So the minimum distance of 45 squared plus 30 squared occurs in two hours. Okay, so we use the Pythagorean theorem here. Let's see what the next one is. A circular container open at the top and having a capacity, okay, capacity, we've got a volume, right, cubic inches, is to be manufactured. The cost of the material used for the bottom is $3 per square inch, so that's an area measurement, and the cost for the rest is $1 per square inch. Find the dimensions that will minimize the cost. A circular container open at the top, so we got a can. That is one awesome can. What do you think about that? It's open here. The bottom is $3 per square inch. And the rest is $1 per square inch. We want to minimize the cost. So we've got two things to build, the sides and the bottom. So the cost is equal to the cost of the sides plus the cost of the bottom. It's a per square inch, so we've got to find areas. So let's say this can has a radius R and a height H. All right, so the bottom is a circle, so I know the bottom is pi r squared. And then the cost was $3 per square inch, so let's put the 3 right here. To get the cost of the sides, let's visualize what this thing looks like if I take my scissors and I cut up through here and lay this flat. So we'd have h here, and then when we open it up, we get this rectangle where this piece has to fit all the way around the top of that circle. So that piece has to be the exact same as the circumference of the circle. So the sides make an, a rectangle of dimensions h and 2 pi r. So when you multiply those together, you get the area of the side, 2 pi r times h, and then times the dollar amount, which was just $1. So let's go ahead and send that through there. Cost is equal to 2 pi r h plus 3 pi r squared. So I've got too many variables. I've got r's and h's. Let's go find us a number. That was our capacity number. That's the volume. So our side equation is going to be the volume. Okay, the volume of anything is the area of the base times the height. So in our case, the area of the base is a circle, pi r squared, times the height. We can cancel the pi's, and then I guess we'll solve for h. 24 over r squared will be h. Let's go up to our objective function and put that in where the h is. So I have cost is 2 pi r times 24 over r squared plus 3 pi r squared. And just a nudge of simplifying, I get 48 pi, and then cancel one of the r's, so put it over r, plus 3 pi r squared. There's our objective function. Now let's take its derivative. Think of that as r to the negative 1, so we'll bring the power down. Then I'll have an r to the negative 2, so I'll move it downstairs like that. The second term, bring the 2 down, and I'll get 6 pi times r. I'm going to set that equal to 0. Now 
let's go ahead and separate our fractions. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by r squared. So I'll have 48 pi is equal to 6 pi r cubed. Now let's divide by 6 pi. The pi's will cancel. And I believe 6 times 8 is 48. So I have r cubed is 8, which means r is 2, cube root of 8. Let's do our second derivative test right here. C double prime, think of that as r to the negative 2. So I'm going to have negative 2 times 48 gives me a positive 96 pi over r cubed plus 6 pi. So notice that when I put a 2 in there, everything in this expression is positive. All right, so positive second derivative means I have a min. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to minimize the cost. So now we answer the question, find the dimensions that will minimize cost. So let's put our answer over here. Cost is minimized when the radius is 2 inches and the height from up here, 2 squared is 4, 4 into 24 is 6 inches. We, we got them all then. One, two, three, four. We've got four examples here. There's one more on the sheet on Blackboard, so you can go and take a look at how we did that. And if you need me, I can go through and, and work it on Blackboard Ultra when we meet.